I'm Elizabeth Vargas, and welcome to 2020 in Touch. It was nothing if not suspicious. Two husbands of the same wife buried side by side after mysterious deaths. So what killed them, or whom? The wife or the daughter? Here's David Muir. The changing of the seasons in upstate New York. It was here Stacy Castor, still a young woman, would experience her first great love and her first great loss. When Stacy was just 17, she met the man who would become her first husband, Michael Wallace. Mike was the love of my life. I knew five minutes after I met him that I was gonna marry him. Mike was the life of the party. Mike was larger than life. Mike adored Stacy, and in 1988, they had their first daughter. I knew from that minute on, my whole reason for being here was to take care of her. I would say that Ashley and I were best friends. We did everything together. Three years later, Stacy gave birth to their second daughter, Bree. Michael was instantly taken with her. He would soon call his younger daughter his princess. Bree was daddy's little angel. Bree could do no wrong in Michael's eye. Bree could walk on water. What about Ashley? There was no talk of any relationship with Ashley and Michael, ever. All Stacy ever talked about, Mike and Bree, Mike and Bree. And I think on some levels, definitely that hurt her. Could you see it as a mom? Yeah, everybody around could tell that, could see that. That Ashley was not daddy's little girl, it was the other daughter. Yeah. Though Michael and Stacy sometimes argued, they seemed to love each other and were getting by. Stacy worked at an ambulance dispatch company. Mike was a mechanic. But then, nearly 10 years into their marriage, Mike started to get sick. He did not look good. He was coughing. He said his shoulder ached. And he said, oh, I think if I just rest for a while. And I said, I think you better go to the doctor tomorrow. But he never made it to that doctor. A few days later, Ashley was home alone with her father and noticed he was behaving oddly. He was laying on the couch and he was making what I thought were funny faces. And all of a sudden, he just sticks his arm up in the air and like puts his arm on his side and then his arm just fell down. And by that time, I had to go get my sister from school. She left to get her sister, her father still lying on that couch. It was the last time she would see him alive. It was scary. I've relived this day over and over again in my head because what if there was something that I could have done? Like, I should have known, but I didn't. I was 11. Doctors believe that first husband, a 38-year-old who drank and smoked, died of a heart attack. But there was only one way to know for sure, an autopsy. Stacy told the doctors it wasn't needed. If he was the love of your life, why wouldn't you want to know what was truly behind his death. Because when his doctor told me that they believed he died of a heart attack, I believed that, you know. There was no reason for me to question that. And as the entire family grieved, to friends and relatives, Stacy put on a stoic front. She didn't really cry at the funeral. I thought she was sad, and I thought she was trying to not to cry because me and my sister were there she didn't want us to see her sad. With Michael's $50,000 life insurance policy, Stacy paid for the funeral and paid off some of the family debt. She took the girls to Disney World, their first real vacation. A mother, now left to raise her two daughters alone, was looking to the future. So life went on as normal after? Basically, yes. It was just me and my mom and my sister, and that's how it was for a while. Everybody liked it that way, or so we seemed to think. <laughs> and then she met David. David Castor, the man who'd become Stacy's second husband, the man who would become stepfather to her two girls. But just two years into the marriage, he was dead too. 